Hello everyone, my name is Abby and I'm going to be walking you through Lab Module 7 of the Yeast Orphan Gene Project. So your gene of unknown function most likely was included in the yeast deletion collection and after creation of this collection some basic questions were asked of all of these strains. We will now look at Prophecy and the Yeast Fitness Database for more information based on this. Alright, and we're going to get started by opening the Module 7 Guide and the Module 7 Worksheet. And this module starts with working with the Saccharomyces cerevisiae morphological database, but unfortunately that program has been discontinued, so we're not going to start there. So I am going to scroll all the way down and start with Prophecy by opening that up. Alright, so I will be using Mech1. And it's going to open up to this page, and it has um, four different charts. Uh, one that is a control, and that's showing um, on growth medium a mutant and a duplicate versus a wild two wild types. Then we have a strain on an NACL, which is a high salt environment. We have the diamide, which is oxidative stress, so the ability to tolerate production of destructive reactive oxygen species. And we have the DTT, which is reductive stress, so the ability of cells to maintain redox homeostasis. And we have the paraquat, which is also oxidative stress, so again, the ability to tolerate production of destructive reactive oxygen species. So I am going to paste all of the graphs here, and that's just going to take a minute. All right, and we're going to start by analyzing the graph. So we have our mutant in red, so that has your um, gene knocked out, so it will not be making that protein. We have the duplicate in green and the two wild types. And as you can see with the control, they mostly line up, so they have the same growth density on the plate over time. So now we have the high salt environment, and as you can see, both the mutant and the duplicate uh, show a little less density in terms of growth. Uh, the du duplicate shows a little more in terms of not growing as densely, but they do seem to almost um, level off at the end of the time for the growing, but the duplicate doesn't quite get to that spot as well, so um, NACL could inhibit its growth too. Then we have the, uh, the diamide or the oxidative stress, so it looks like there's a pretty great gap in terms of growth, but they level off. Um, for the DTT, or the reductive stress, it looks like it grows a little better. And um, for the paraquat, it looks basically the same as the uh, wild type. So now we are going to uh, summarize what we found in the gene by environment phenotype summary. In the sodium chloride and the diamide, the mutant and uh, the duplicate both did not grow as well, but tended to um, flatten out to this, the wild type towards the end of the curve in terms of growth density. For the DTT, um, it appeared as though the reductive stress allowed for them to grow better, but not, um, but not distinctively um, better. So what do you think these data combined could mean for the function of your protein? So oxidative stress may inhibit growth in a knockout and reductive stress may increase growth in a knockout. So now we're going to move on to the yeast fitness database. And we are going to open that up. All right, so now we're going to get started with the yeast fitness database. And we're going to put our gene up at the top. And I'm using YOL 
019W because I could not get any results for MEC1. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is not the heterozygous knockout section, but the homozygous knockout section. And what we're going to use in our worksheet is based off of um, the p-value, and we want a p-value less than 0 0.05. So that is that column right there. So we're going to be looking at myosin. Um, and the z-results, uh, we'll copy from that section, the fitness defect z-score, and it's myrosin, sorry. And pasting that, and then the p-value, we'll copy and paste that as well. And then what we're going to want to be looking for is the mechanism of action. So that's just something that you have to Google. And I'm searching myrosin mechanism of action. And um, with the results, you might have to read through a couple different um, pages that show up. So after skimming through a couple different ones, I thought this was the best site to use um, that gave the best information for what I was looking for. Um, so I'm going to copy this information about um, myrosin being the anti-proliferative antimicrobial fungal metabolites known as the myrosins have been proposed to cross-link DNA by double nucleotide addition. So just copying and pasting that into the mechanism of action, and I would suggest reading into it more to see uh, what more information you can get from the paper that you find, and then copying and pasting the uh, link as well for a citation. I'm honestly not entirely sure as of right now what that information um, that I so far have for the mechanism of action could mean for the function of my protein, so I would definitely want to read more into the paper, um, think a little bit more about what information I've gotten from previous modules, and even potentially, potentially read more papers about the uh, mechanism of action. So I went a little bit out of order, but um, now I'm moving on to drug number two, and that drug is going to be Wiscostatin. So the defect Z-score, um, fitness defect Z-score, copying and pasting that, the p-value, um, copying and pasting that, and again, you would look up the mechanism of action and talk about how it could affect this, how the drug could affect the cell. So this phenyl is this drug that comes up, copying the z-value again. Copying the p-value, and again you would want to get the mechanism of action, and then at the end it asks to look at the different mechanisms of action for the three drugs you have researched. When you combine this information, what do you think it could mean for the function of your protein? So anything that uh, shows up that could show a similar function, um, you would want to talk about. Now on to the co-fitness interaction. So again, you don't want the heterozygous, you want the homozygous. And it's giving you a gene name. Um, so this one is PET18. And then you're going to go to the SGD and um, search it in the search bar. And then you're going to copy and paste the description. And uh, the uh, yeast that I'm using um, is not a known gene. Um, it's a gene of unknown function. So it's likely that a lot of the genes that come up with this might not have a um, known function. All right, and now getting gene name number, number two, and that is SNC1. Searching that in the SGD again, and copying and pasting the description. So you're going to want to go through and do this with all of the different genes that show up, um, writing down the name, searching the description, and copying and pasting it, um, 1 through 10. And then you're going to want to read through the descriptions, figure out anything that you don't understand what it means, and then... Uh, put together what things are occurring again and again and commenting on that at the end of the um, 
question section. So now we're going to go on to the gene ontologies or the GO terms. So um, GO ontology aims to standardize representation of gene and gene product attributes across databases. Genes with known functions are grouped into all of the categories that that function applies to with respect to molecular function, biological process, and cellular components. So for this one, I don't have any enriched GO terms. Um, so I'm just going to use the heterozygous enriched GO terms, for example. So you would just copy down all the ones for process. So cellular protein mechanism, metabolism, sorry. Uh, protein metabolism, and the cellular macromolecular metabolism. I would recommend searching what those different terms mean so you have a better understanding of it. So, and then based on all of these results, um, what your different GO terms were, process, function, component, what those GO terms mean, the conclusions that you made um, from the co-fitness interactions and from the drug sensitivity information as well, as well as whatever information you got from prophecy, you would take all of those results and hypothesize what role in the cell um, your protein may play. Thanks for watching. I hope that this video was helpful. And for more information, go to the yeastorphanproject.com. And this video was funded by the National Science Foundation. Thanks.